This video will demonstrate how to use a linear parameter and a stretch action to add authoring elements to a drawing. When this drawing is inserted into another drawing, it will become a dynamic block. Begin by creating your geometry and model space. This is just plain old geometry like you would normally do in any AutoCAD drawing. Notice that my insertion point right now is 0, 0, this lower left hand corner. I'll also show you how to change that once you get into the block editor. In order to create a dynamic block, or at least add authoring elements to this drawing, <clears throat> you're going to go to the Insert tab, and you're going to use the Block Editor to add those authoring elements. When you click on Block Editor, you'll notice that your, uh, your, your Block Editor definition comes up what you want to do is you want to select the current drawing. Notice that there are no other blocks in this drawing. It's just a drawing by itself right now. But I want to add those elements to the current drawing, so I'll choose OK. And you'll see right off the bat what happens is I am moved to the block editor environment. I have a new tab that shows up at the top. I have tools that are suitable for the block editor. I also get my block editor uh, palette that comes up here. We're going to start off on the parameters tab up at the top. Let's begin by adding a base point to the drawing. Again, like I said a moment ago, the insertion point, the default insertion point for this is the lower left hand corner right here where 0, 0 is. But if I wanted that to be a different point, I could add a base point to the drawing. So I'll click base point and I will make the base point the middle of that line right there. So now my insertion point is going to be the midpoint of that line instead of the left hand, lower left hand corner there. The next thing I want to do is add a linear parameter. A linear parameter is like a dimension that allows me to change the length of this block using the stretch action later. So I come up here to linear parameter. Before I place the linear parameter inside the drawing, I'm going to change the label on the drawing. So I'll type L for label, and I'll give it the label bench length. I'm also going to change the description on this parameter. It's good to add a description because uh, in the block itself, after I've inserted the block, the grip will show up with this description. So the description is going to be sets the length. of the bench. From here now I can simply add this linear parameter wherever I want it to go. So I'll go from the lower left hand corner here to the lower right hand corner there and I'll just place it as I would a dimension. Now notice right off the bat that I get my grip. Okay, This is going to be the grip that's used to stretch this block and make it a different length. But I also have a grip on this side, and I don't want to be able to stretch it in both directions. So I'm going to click on just that linear grip right there and hit the delete key. Uh, and that way I get rid of the grip that would want to stretch this in the wrong direction. Additionally, you'll notice that there is a little yellow exclamation point here. Uh, that's there just to alert me to the fact that this linear parameter is not yet associated with an action which is what we're going to do next. In order for me to actually change the length of this block, I need to use a stretch command. And you're going to find that on this action tab right here. So I'll click on the action tab, and you'll notice that there is a stretch action. So when I click on stretch action, the first thing that asks me to do is to select the parameter. I want to select this parameter right here. And then it asks me to uh, specify a point to associate with the action. And I could either specify this point on the left hand side or this point on the right hand side. Since I'll be stretching the right hand side of this block, I'm going to just simply click on this side here and now notice that that red X stays over here on the right side. Next on the command line it asks me to specify the first corner of my stretch frame. So remember, when you stretch, you have to use a crossing window. So I'm going to make a window here that would represent my crossing window. And then you actually have to go back in and you 
have to now select those things that you want to stretch. So I just basically make that same stretch frame again. So now all of these items will be stretched, okay, inside this stretch frame, and you are done. Um, when you're done selecting objects, you press Enter. Notice now that my yellow exclamation point has disappeared and I have my stretch action down here. If I hover over it, you will see that it gives me my stretch window. Okay, And you just have to remember that all of these items are in the stretch window. If you want to test this block, and notice I can click test. I click my block here and then when I go over here I hover over it. It gives me a list. Or excuse me, it gives me the description. And when I click on this now, I can change this park bench to be any length I want, okay? Which is almost correct. Remember the instructions on this were to create the park bench that would stretch in increments from 48 to 66 in six inch increments. So I need to go back now and add those. Close the test block, and I can add that uh, I can add that value set by modifying this linear parameter using the change ch change properties dialog box I can select this parameter notice it says a linear parameter here what I want to do is I want to change the value set from none to an increment I want my increment to be six inches the shortest that this park bench is going to be is 48 and the maximum that it will be is 66. So after adding that I can close this and now if I test this block again you'll notice that when I stretch it it only goes to those four increments. Close this test block, close the block Whoa. editor, save the changes. Notice that my origin point has now been moved to the back. Okay, that's where I put my base point when I created the block. There are still no blocks in this drawing. This is a drawing with authoring elements. It has not been made into a block. It becomes a block when I insert this drawing into another drawing. So now to demonstrate that, I'll start by saving this. You have to save this drawing. Save it here. I'll create a new drawing in which to insert this block. And now when I go to the insert command, I can say I want to insert this bench. Here it is. And when I bring it in, I can insert it. It is now a block. Notice that I hover over it. AutoCAD tells me that it is a block. And when I come here, sets the length of the block and changes.